Uh, I want to explain why I'm reading from this. Uh, Nina's poem is in Out of Hour, and she sent me a printed copy of it. But as anyone who's ever tried to read someone else's poetry knows, you have to kind of score it. You have to kind of hear it musically in your head. I don't know if I can ever replicate what Nina would do. Um, but to help me do that, I wrote it out on my own in this. So that's why I'm reading from this ridiculous looking uh, thing. Uh, thank you so much. This has been a great reading. I've heard some people I've never heard before, so it's exciting. Thank you. And uh, I dressed appropriately. To Che Guevara, who showed sympathy for our struggles in the USA, the belly of the beast. The Cuban poets say, the poet is you, but is it? You left a few poems, heartfelt, but you did not turn over your energies to this demanding, nagging muse. Your path was another, perhaps embarked upon in your Argentine intellectual home, or on the back of a motorcycle, or in the rhetorical embrace of the persistent woman, Hilda, who brought you to Guatemala, where you experienced dangerous struggle firsthand as the Arbenz government tried to institute needed reforms. And you and Hilda had to get out fast when U.S. Marines put an end to all that. Or in that historic all-night conversation in Mexico City with Fidel that led your, to your arrests and intertwining lives, you sailed off in the grandma and had that poetic habit of recording your thoughts and experiences, now 22 publications and their translations. Hey, maybe the poet was you, do you think? It was easy to become a Cuban after you suffered their monstrous mosquitoes and took heroic leadership in their guerrilla war. For you, like Bolivar and Marti, it was the ongoing fight for Latin America's independence. Not so easy, really, suffering from asthma in the rugged Sierra Maestra, Cuban men teasing, testing you, this foreign commandante among them who leaned toward tough love and even tougher standards of dedication to tasks after the revolutionary triumph. You, doctor, looked into the perfectibility of humans and behaved from the motives of the collective good, not personal or financial gain. With such an economic vision, you found the routines of running the revolution and the Cuban banking system not so satisfying. All the multinational exiled revolutionaries of the time drawn to Havana by the tropical fragrance of freedom buzzed in your ears, sent you to lead failed guerrilla wars, Africa's Congo first, then Bolivia, where decades later the indigenous movement found its own form of liberation, creating rights for Mother Earth, Pacha Mama. Why then has the decades old icon of you made it on so many t shirts, even now? The true revolutionary, you said is guided by great feelings of love. And it was your love, that oneness love that goes beyond one's family, beyond nationality. The youth of these past generations confront the ecological crisis before them with a planetary flag in their hearts and hopes for our dear Earth, our darling Mother Earth, Pachamama, Pachamama, Pachamama. Now that's the stuff of poetry. Need the sun. Well, 
I'm going to read two um, uh, short poems by Nina, if uh, we should follow that. And the first one is called All My Life That Has Always Been a War. At five, my first movie, there were men on horses killing each other. Lots of men and lots of noise. Lots of dust from horses' hooves. It was a frontier war to own America, but I didn't know that then. Only knew that I didn't like the killing. I left the dark theater, but the killing never stopped. So sure. And the next one is called Air Strike. The president wants to invade Iraq. He wants to unzip an air bomber's belly, to slide death down the deep throat of a foreign city, already limp from the last airstrike, already grieving for dead and dying children from the last assault. The president's smart bombs don't know the difference between a bridge and a boy, but oh, how his parents do. <laughs> <laughs>